Um, I have been given this quite daunting task of closing this three-day symposium, um, and I'm sure a number of you would love to be up here doing the same thing. Um, I'm trying to present my view to basically a who's who in fire research across Australia and, and overseas. So that is uh, a pretty daunting, daunting um, prospect. And actual fact, my mind was wandering a little bit yesterday, and, and um, as my mind does, and I was pondering what would happen to fire research across the country if a bomb went off in here uh, and killed everyone. Don't, don't panic, there's no, nothing's going to happen. Uh, and, and then I thought, um, and it flows on from Lockie's question as well, I think uh, he raised uh, earlier today, yesterday, as where are the next generation of fire scientists coming from. But then, after my mind had wandered, I went out to morning tea. And you look around morning tea and there's so many young, uh, bright, young, keen uh, people involved in fire science and research. And you see that at the AFAC conferences as well. So I think we're in pretty good hands um, when, when a number of us retire to greener pastures. Um, as I said up there, I've got no doubt that uh, uh, we require sound research to underpin our actions. Um, I'm a huge supporter of research um, and, and, and try and uh, instil that in, in our agencies. And it would be remiss of me, and I'm sure Richard Thornton would uh, be disappointed if I didn't say it, there's a national fire policy statement out that uh, uh, was developed uh, and, uh, for Australia and it's been endorsed by all our premiers and, and state ministers and the Prime Minister. And in that, there's a specific section in there about the need to develop a comprehensive research strategy to support ecological research into bushfire management across the landscape. So at the highest level, research is accepted in fire. So I just thought I'd give that a plug. Um, obviously, the thirst for research uh, is quite strong, as indicated. There's over 150 participants in the last three days. We had 1,500 people just at the AFAC conference recently. Um, and it's now the largest event of its type in the Southern Hemisphere. And it's all about gaining more knowledge and research. Um, I'm not going to insult your collective intelligence by reiterating what we've heard over the last three days. Um, instead, I thought I might try and summarise some key themes and, and some future challenges, very similar to Brian, interestingly, um, that, that I see in my mind. And those that know me know that my mind's not a really nice place to be. It's a bit scary. Um, <laughs> Please note that I'm not being critical, uh, they're my views only, and any complaints should be sent via my email uh, work address and be considered along with the other 567 emails that I currently see in my inbox. And luckily there's no chance for questions. Now, if I know how to click it. Yeah. Oh, no, I just got to change it, that's all. Just a different photo for Yeah, just a different photo. It has nothing to do with what I'm talking about. That's a 30-mile fire site uh, in, in Washington State. Um, I've got a number of themes. I guess the, the first theme that I've got is uh, end user involvement. No, that is in the ACT. Um, some may be aware that I fill the role of a lead end user for the Bushfire CRC in the Fire and the Environment program. Um, and much of the research presented over the last few days has been from a program that Simon Heemstra from the New South Wales RFS was the lead end user, and many of you would know Simon. This role has developed over the last three years or so into what I believe is critical in ensuring that research before, during and after is undertaken in line with what industry want. And, and Brian mentioned that exact same point. Um, it's pivotal in ensuring that we don't waste precious time and resources in getting results to a level of accuracy that might satisfy the researcher, but really not required in the real world. Now, again, I say that with all due respect to researchers, but in my role as lead end user, I, I know I had that challenge uh, talking to some of the researchers in our program who were concentrating on ultimate accuracy before they'd actually deliver um, um, uh, outcomes. As I was talking to someone at morning tea, that as an end user and a practitioner, we have to act regardless, and we'll use whatever we've got. And if it's the best, best available, fantastic. And Mike Watton, I think, mentioned the other day that uh, something a little inaccurate is a damn sight better than nothing at all. Um, and it's that, that end user role to try and make sure that we, we can get those accuracy levels that they're clear and that expectations don't exceed reality. And I think um, a Greg Potts raised a question just before about the acknowledging the inherent variability 
um, in results and the limitations, uh, but we have to work with what we've got. Uh, my second point, so that was on end user, is communication. That's uh, in the Cascades in uh, uh, Washington State, just out of interest. Um, the, this three-day event I saw very similar to the research advisory forums. Some people in here may have been involved in those research advisory forums, and they were where the researchers came together and explained to each other the ins and outs of the research they were doing uh, and sharing with other researchers. And, and I guess, and this is again my view, practitioners and end users realise the importance of R2 bias, coefficients of variation, correlations and binomial or logical regressions, even though I'm not quite sure what any of those mean. Um, but, but all I really need to know as an end user um, is that you believe what you're doing and that you know what you're doing. And, and to me, I have trust in all the researchers that are here uh, across Australia. Um, Alan uh, MacArthur had a actually very good point that uh, was mentioned by, by Phil at the start about statistics just getting in the way of a good model. Um, several of the presentations showed how direct involvement with the end user resulted in something that's utilised and taken up in operational conditions. So really it's about communications. Um, they're, they're, they're needed based on the audience involved and um, this forum in particular is fantastic and a very efficient way to deliver a lot of information. There'll be videos come out afterwards, there'll be written papers, etc. But we need to follow that up with more interactive engagement of the end results. Um, so we've seen what, what, what is, is possible, now we need to get the end results. Uh, third one, utilisation. Again, nothing to do with the, the, the subject. Um, research is proceeding at a rapid pace, um, but, and, and I think this was raised by Phil Cheney as well. But we as operational managers sometimes struggle in the uptake and utilisation. Uh, Simon Heemstra posed the statement that the science in some areas has been completed, but we now need to use the bloody stuff. We didn't actually say that, I added that in. Um, you just got to look at Project Vesta, uh, which has just about brought Jim Gould to his knees. Um, it was a nationally funded project, years of sampling, data collection, analysis, validation, oh, and Lockheed McCord also, sorry Lockheed, um, yet it's still not in widespread use. Um, we really need to do something about that. Phil Cheney's, uh, um, whoops, 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 oh, yeah, Phil Cheney's comment still rings in my head a little bit about information overload. You mentioned about on the first day he was talking about information overload. And it may just be me, but I personally get really quite frustrated uh, as I'm not quite sure how to introduce and utilise so much information into the workplace and then what I'm going to do with it. Um, research is often aimed at answering the question, but we also need to focus on the industry uptake at the national level and, and look at ways of doing that through AFAC or the Bushfire CRC or its successor. Um, many of the products that we saw actually today uh, have come from research over time providing a range of tools and then implemented by, by agencies. I suppose one, one uh, quick thing to add there is very soon we'll see a flood of final research reports uh, as the bushfire CRC winds up in, in uh, June 2014. And, and I guess I was pondering whether the industry is prepared for that uh, and whether we've got the necessary systems in place to, to you know, what are we going to do with it? There'll be this big, you know, in a very simplistic sense, big bunch of research prompt on the table, so there you go. Uh, there, there's our results after three years. What are we as end users going to do with it? And I'm not quite sure that we've, we've uh, really answered that. Um, just one other point under, under utilisation. Um, we're seeing bushfire research is being undertaken by a whole range of agencies and institutions. A lot of people talk about research and sometimes think about the bushfire CRC, but we've seen today there's, there's just a broad range of research being done across the country. Um, we need to continue to work to ensure the results of that broad research is made available and communicated between all players in the industry. Um, and again, Brian mentioned about you know, utilising resources, make sure we don't double up. Let's get that information out in a, in a, in a systematic way. Sorry, you winded me up, are you? Good on you. Um, training and development, mentioned by several speakers. We need to embed that into our training material. Um, AFAC at the moment leads that. There are some challenges with that. Um, and the ongoing delivery of, of, of training and updates is essential. The last three days has been a, a good example of professional development. 
Sorry. Sorry. Oh. Um, national consistency. Um, yeah, national consistency is a bit of a bugbear of mine. After Black Saturday in Victoria and after the fires in 2013, uh, 2003 in Canberra, sorry, um, we had a whole lot of uh, coronal inquiries and they're just the norm now. Out of that, there was a number of people, questions asked as to why you didn't have things in place and, and I personally was involved in the Canberra fire coronal process for a fair period of time. And it's not much fun. I remember Gary Morgan making a statement several years ago about how you address the question from the coroner that the research was available, but you as a manager decided for whatever reason not to take it up in your agency. And, and that sort of rang a little bit in, in my head, is the research is there and you've got to prove why you didn't use it. So we've got to think about that. Um, and, and with national consist consistency is, yeah, the number of people we were flicking on our electronic devices to look at the outcomes of the Tasmanian inquiry today. I'm sure a number of people in the room have, have read the recommendations already. Um, those recommendations will have a flow-on effect right across through the industry. Um, as happened in Victoria, everyone was scrambling to say, oh, here's a recommendation for Victoria. Shit, did we do that? Oh, God, yes, we'll tick off on that one. Um, but wouldn't it be good to do that a little bit beforehand in, in a national consistent way? Um, hang on, hang on. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, yeah, um, one thing, we heard, heard from Long about how fire weather had improved over 60 years, and I think everyone was blown away by the initial weather reports and then 60 years' time, how, how that's improved. Um, we've got to probably learn a little bit about, about how they did that. Um, how they got that, uh, the systems they used to, 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 to get that developed to such a stage. Uh, I, th I think there's, a, there's some learnings there. Um, do, 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 sorry, sorry, I'm nearly finished. Um, data collection and custodian of, of systems, another bugbear of mine. Um, uh, we really haven't nailed how we're going to look after all the systems we develop. Um, and I'm probably talking about stuff I don't know with Phoenix, but there's certainly a number of other systems that we as an industry develop and they just hang out there. And, and I'm not quite sure how they, whether we've nailed the continual updates and um, um, storage of that. Jim mentioned about uh, data collection, garbage in, garbage out, and it was really great to see today that the moves that Jim and, and Lockie have made to, to store that electronic, electronically, the, the, the old data that's there. For, for use by all agencies. Um, but we need some sort of central repository thing somehow. And, and Simon Heaps had talked about uh, the NASA thing going down and not being able to do their curing, you know, backups. Um, nearly there. Uh, ongoing research um, with, with uh, ongoing plots, uh, not a real sexy thing when people go for bids for new research. There's a number of plots and, and, and research that things that we set up uh, we set up for a three-year bushfire CRC program, but the plots are more valuable than that. They, they, you know, we need to sort of, the, their value extends far beyond the period of that research program. What do we do with them? Who takes ownerships of them? Um, no, 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 hang on, nearly finished. Um, oh, um, and again, Brian mentioned this, uh, um, research over the, God, I've got it right. Um, <laughs> research over the past 60 years has been extensive, fantastic. Are we getting ahead of the game or are we just keeping up to it? We've got all these challenges on the horizon and it'd be remiss of me because uh, um, I did get these... Jeff Carey got some figures for me, thanks Jeff. Um, yeah, climate change, uh, and, and again, Brian mentioned this in, in his talk just recently. There's going to be this increase in rain, uh, drop in rainfall, 50% increase in these high fire danger days, Demographics are changing, people moving from the country, uh, from the bush to the, to the towns, the uh, urban edges moving. Um, what sort of research and, and how are we addressing that? That's going to be a really big thing that's coming on the scene. Carbon budgets, etc. Um, I have really nearly finished. Um, uh, oh, uh, collaboration between all parties. I don't think I've got any. Oh, I have. <laughs> oh, <don't>, sorry. <laughs> um, uh, Further collaboration between all parts of the industry. We're, we're all in this together, and Brian mentioned this as well. Um, and we should not see ourselves, so, even though I said at the start I'm not a researcher, and now I'm saying opposite, but we shouldn't just see ourselves either in research or either practitioner. There's a number of people in this room, Mark Bell, Noreen, Lockie, Simon Heapstra, 
uh, Adam, one of the people who works for us, Margaret Kitchen, a whole range of people who and, uh, might be research or practitioners, but they're not pigeonholed because they, they do a whole broad range of stuff. So we need to, to talk more. Uh, climate change. Um, and that's it. And sorry, one last thing. Um, <laughs> sorry, just, just really like to say a big thank you to Andrew and his team uh, for getting this collection and gathering of, of a gaggle of people together. Um, I think it's been a great uh, couple of days that really made people think, think. And the indication of that is that every morning tea and lunch time that we had, there was discussion about what was being discussed. It wasn't about the weather or the footy on the weekend. Every sort of discussion I went to, it was, it was involving what had been discussed, what we could input, what was no good about it, what was good about it. So it's triggered that, that sort of communication. I think it's fantastic. So, well done. <laughs>